Okay, now I'm going to tell you guys a funny story <laughs> and another reason why I have cut Saturdays out of my vlogging schedule and why I could not vlog the rest of that day. So today I wanted to introduce to you guys our new Dalmatian puppy, Pongo, <laughs> who is going to lick my face off. I wanted to just tell you guys like how we got him and his stats and everything like that. Anyway, to get right into it, Pongo, I've already said this, but oh well. Pongo is a three-month-old Dalmatian puppy. We were told right before we got him that he was five months old. We talked to the person who previously owned him, and she knew the breeder. So we were like, can you possibly get an exact date of when he was born? Because that's kind of important to know, if we can know it. And she was like, yeah, sure, just let me, he wants to play. Let me just um, contact her, and I will get right back with you. And she did, and he was actually born December 26th which makes him just three months old, <laughs> which is okay. It's fine. I mean, it's not like the end of the world, but still it would have been nice to know exactly how old he was before we got him, but it wasn't a make it or break it. It would have just been nice to know the first time around. We got Pongo because of a Craigslist ad. Devin actually sent me this picture on Craigslist and I looked at his little face and I was like, oh my gosh, Devin, if we can, we have to have this dog. And Devin was like, if we can this weekend, then we will. And we did. It was actually a pretty quick process. We just emailed her and set up a time and date when we would be there. She was really iffy because she said that she had a lot of previous inquiries and they all were wishy-washy. They weren't really committed to coming to get him. So she was like, listen, if you guys aren't going to come here, then I have somebody from Columbus who's going to, Ohio, who's going to come here. And we were like, no, 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 we're coming. So we got him on Saturday. When we got Pongo, he came with his shot record and this door chair. And since it was something from home, he's going to love on it. No, he's not. He's going to rip it apart. Okay. Since it was something from home and it would help him get adjusted and used to our house, I said, sure, we'll take the door chair. We have since got him a very nice pet bed back there. It's a real tree pet bed. Um, we got him that today, as well as pet treats and quite a few toys. Because he's a three-month-old puppy, he's very energetic, obviously. He's ripping apart his chair right now. We've been trying to take him outside as much as humanly possible. We did a lot of research on Dalmatians before we got him so that we would know, like, how to take care of him when we got him. Oh, he's got a squeaker toy. We also had to get him a special kind of pet food. Dalmatians have to have food that is low in protein because they are prone to kidney stones, and I don't want that vet bill. So <laughs> we've been looking at trying to get him um, the right pet food. Right now we are feeding him this. This is just what we found that works for now. I looked online and it said it was okay, but I'm going to do some more research because I really don't want kidney stones in my dog. Right now, he is not trained like at all and the owners that had him before us didn't even name him, much less um, teach him anything. They hadn't even started the process of trying to um, house train him. So we're having to do that and he's actually learning pretty fast. I mean, don't get me wrong. He still goes in the house, but at least it's beside the door that goes outside. I mean, it's close, right? We try to take him out as much as possible, like every 30 minutes to an hour. I try to let him go outside and try to use the bathroom. And with Dalmatians, when you train them, you can't use any kind of like shock collars or anything like that. You can't do that because they don't respond well to that. So every time Ponga goes outside and potties, we treat him. Devin actually looked into places that we can take him to get him trained. And he found one in Pittsburgh, which is a little bit of a drive for us. But um, considering what they offer, it would be an, a nice thing to do. It would be a good idea. I don't know if we're going to actually do it. <laughs> we really want to, but it's kind of expensive. I don't want to like put my financial business out there, um, but it's a little pricey. Dalmatians are really smart 
and even if we did just a little bit of training he would learn really fast so I mean at least that's a plus as far as the girls and how he does with them he's a puppy so he's very energetic he wants to jump he wants to play he wants to do the puppy bite where they're not really hurting you and Carly loves him Carly is all about Pongo first thing in the morning she goes to the dog crate because we are crate training him you have to with Dalmatians Dalmatians are very energetic and if you just let them roam around free without a crate when you're not at home or if you're sleeping at night, they will destroy your house. <laughs> we looked into this. So yes, we are crate training him. And first thing in the morning, Carly rushes to the crate and she takes off the blanket because we put a blanket to kind of make it dark for him to go to sleep. And she wants to talk to him, wants to play with him. She is so all about Pongo. <laughs> Kenley, however, is a different story. She's very hesitant of Pongo, and because she's like literally the same size he is, <laughs> she's not really so much into wanting to play with him. She's stayed very much by my side and really doesn't want much to do with him. I'm sure when he grows up and gets out of the puppy stage, she will be way more into wanting to play with Pongo and everything, but as of right now, and you can watch this in my last vlog, she's just not that really into him. As for his name, Pongo, it obviously came from 101 Dalmatians. If you've never seen that movie, I am so sorry. I really recommend that you see it because it's a really good movie. And also, I have a friend who has named all of her pets after famous book and movie characters who are also pets. And I just thought it was the neatest idea. And I was like, I want to do that. That is so cool. So that is another reason why I wanted to name him Pongo. Because one, it's from 101 Dalmatians, which is one of my favorite Disney movies. It's just so cute. And two, I really liked her idea of getting pet names from movies and books. Okay, now I'm going to tell you guys a funny story. <laughs> and another reason why I have cut Saturdays out of my vlogging schedule and why I could not vlog the rest of that day. So, we drive about an hour and a half-ish to go get Pongo. And we got there and he's very happy and energetic and excited. We paid for him and all that. We put him in our car and as we're going down the road... <laughs> He's very scared. He's put, he's got his head in my arm, like in my, you know, elbow right here, and he's whimpering and whining the whole time. And we go down the road a little bit, like 5 minutes and or well, maybe it was 10 minutes. And all of a sudden, he vomits. Thankfully, the first time he did it, his head was in this crease of my arm and he puked on the door and in the floor right there beside me and I didn't kn even know that he did it until I started smelling it and I looked down and I was like oh Devin Pongo just puked and about the same time that I said that Devin started <laughs> making that sound that he had to pull over and then he had to go throw up as well so if you can imagine here I am on the side of the road with my husband puking I'm covered in vomit because he's vomited on the side of my pants and as well as my arm has his drool and vomit on me and the whole door and the you know down there so I've got vomit everywhere and I'm just sitting there like you can help me clean off now like anytime that'd be great and we had nothing on us we didn't even have baby wipes because I accidentally left them at home when we left and didn't realize it until this point. So Devin gets back in the car, we roll the windows down, we're like trying to get the smell out so at least Devin doesn't puke again because he does have a weak stomach. And Devin is like on a mission to get me clean. He's like trying to find a gas station, he's trying to find a car wash, he's trying to find somewhere to clean up the puke off of the door and the car and myself. And what in our luck, just have it the car wash we went to, all of the um, vacuums and everything were completely full and the only one that wasn't full, it was broken. So then Devin tries another car wash and we get to the only vacuum they have because this one's a smaller car wash. We get to the only vacuum and there's a car parked right beside of it and there's no like additional room to park beside of this uh, vacuum. So we had to park, okay, if this is the vacuum. We had to park like at an angle like this. So we're like here and the vacuum's here. We couldn't park like right beside of it. Devin got out and went to the car that was right beside the vacuum and asked if they could please move so we could use the vacuum and explain the situation and everything. And <laughs> my luck again, the poor girl had a flat tire and was waiting for a tow truck. 
so she couldn't move. So we're parked at an awkward angle. I'm outside trying to wipe vomit off of me. Devin is trying to put quarters into the uh, vacuum and we start cleaning up the mess. The person in the car beside the vacuum couldn't move because of the flat tire, but she did give us a little thing of wipes, God bless her. So we used those, we cleaned up as much as we could, myself, the car, everything, and then we started going down the road again. And our poor Pongo, he was so nervous. New car, new people. He's only three months old. He's still a little baby. I mean, he was scared. So we go down the road again and he pukes again, not once, but twice more. And luckily, Devin went into the gas station and got a lot of napkins. And I had learned what that heaving sound was before he vomited sounded like. So once he started making the sound, I would take his head and put it in between my legs so that he would vomit in the uh, car mat below rather than on the side of the door. So both times that he vomited on the floor, we just took a bunch of napkins and threw them on the floor and we just covered the area so we didn't have to stop because we really couldn't. Since then, he has obviously gotten used to us. He doesn't quite respond to his name yet, but that'll come with time. And I'll do another update in June, which is when he'll be six months old. And if you guys want to follow me on social media, my links are down below and I will see you guys later in a new vlog. Bye guys.